Can you hear us at home? Can you see? Yeah. Yes, good. All right, everyone. So thank you for everything. Congratulations to the students. We're gonna say that a lot. Round of applause for the students. And their mentors and everyone else involved. And we'll have plenty of those thank yous. Apologies for starting a few minutes late. The traffic for getting the shuttle over here is there are still currently people stuck in traffic. We're going to get started now, though, for interest of time, and they'll join us as they come in. So when we see people roll in, that's why. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce our person who's going to represent the senior leadership of the Cancer Center. Unfortunately, the Cancer Center director, Bob Ferris, couldn't make it today, but instead we have a, a wonderful person who helps to run the administration and run all of the collaborative grants and translational medicine. Uh, and he, like I, started in a high school program, much like this, right? So he very much appreciates and supports uh, this program and, and all of you, and we're here for you. So I'm just gonna turn it over to, to Devin Dressman uh, to give our opening remarks. Thanks everybody. Is this working? Can you guys hear me? Good. All right, well, thank you guys. Um, and I started this slide, uh, hopefully you can read it even though that says live transcript in progress. What a great way to spend your summer. Um, and I mean that in all seriousness. Uh, it, it truly is a magnificent opportunity that you, the students have, have taken on um, and the importance of this. You won't realize this until later in life. I was talking to Jenny as we walked in we were both reminiscing on our summer programs, which was only like a couple of years ago for Jenny and I. Um, but no, it, it, it's really a fantastic experience. So, you, you know, you may think, geez, I could have been at the pool. I'm glad you weren't. I'm glad you guys were here doing science. And it's science that you guys aren't going to experience again until you go on to graduate school. Just to, to, to let that set in, unless you keep doing internships, which I'm going to encourage you to keep doing. So first, as, as David said, congratulations. You guys made it through the summer. Yeah, go ahead. It really is fantastic. It's a fantastic feeling. I can tell you as a scientist, one of the hardest things about being a scientist really comes down to completing a project. And nine times out of 10 in science, and this is why not everybody's a scientist, right? Nine times out of 10, the science is gonna fail. It's not like building a building like this building where, geez, the building is complete, here it is. The one thing I can say, your summer internship is over. So congratulations, you made it through. So as I mentioned, the importance of summer internships and how this will really influence your future. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my past. So my first summer program was actually about the same age as you guys, a sophomore in high school. I grew up in Santa Fe, New Mexico. The biggest thing in science out in New Mexico is physics. Um, I worked in the Maison physics facility where we accelerated protons to 98% the speed of light and smashed them into things. Um, as, a, as a student, that was really, really cool, sounded cool. Um, the funny thing is I wanted a biology background. So all the physicists, they kept asking me questions like, what do you think, Devin, would happen if we put a squirrel in here? And I'm like, oh gosh, you'd kill the squirrel. Like, you know, but anyway. So I worked in, um, and I don't know if there's a pointer here, but hopefully there is. This green dirt mound is where I worked. So um, it sounds funny. We produced, and this is really weird for Los Alamos, we produced 98% of the airborne radioactivity in Los Alamos because we took very small things and smashed them into other things, which caused radiation. That was really cool as a summer. But the more important piece, the important piece for you guys it led to my first scientific paper. It led to my first scientific presentation. You guys had some presentations today. Those experiences will be amazing for you. 
the experience of a summer internship is just unbelievable. And I'm going to tell you, science is not always about successes. Some of you may have found from this summer internship that you hate science. This is not the life you want to live. That's beautiful as well. I want to encourage you to go into science, and I'll tell you you're dead wrong that science isn't the greatest thing ever. But everybody is different. And that's the beautiful part about this. Internships give you the ability to try things out as you move on to the next stage in your life. If you guys can figure that out now, as opposed to when you're in the 20s or in your 30s, you guys are light speed, light head, way ahead of everybody else that's about your age. So some fun facts. You guys are entering a really unique and kind of prestigious group a group of alumni that you guys can carry with you for the rest of your lives. That's around 500 alumni that have graduated from this Hillman Summer Program. And what I can tell you, this is something that we, the Hillman Cancer Center, take great pride in. We put a lot of effort into it. We dedicate a lot of resources to it. Because you, as the future scientists, are really important. The fun thing is we think of you guys as a feeder system. You guys are starting in high school. You guys know and love Pittsburgh, hopefully. So the potential is you guys come back as scientists. And I really hope, similar to me, that at some point in the near future, I look at my desk and I see a CV come across and it says Hillman Summer Academy as a part of your resume. But what would be really cool is when you guys are in a position like mine later in life, you get a, a CV and somebody has that, you now have a relationship. We kind of call that you're a part of a family. So that's really cool. You're a part of a unique family. And what I told you, not everybody's staying in science, but based on our records, we have about 310 of you guys that have stayed in science, which is pretty amazing. 78 or more have started or completed a master's degree. 12 are in uh, doctoral programs with at least two of them completed. 26 are in medical schools with at least one completed. So these things are amazing. And the internship that you guys just experienced will help you understand this going forward. I also wanna highlight something that we also take great pride in, the diversity of this program. I look across this room and I see great diversity, which is phenomenal. And a credit to David and all of the team that helps put this together, Solomon um, as well, and Stephen. Um, I wanna to talk to you briefly about the importance of diversity in science, just to kind of plant a seed so that when you guys continue to go on to science, you can think about these things going forward. So a couple quick reviews in 2015, out of 31 drugs that were approved for cancer, 24 of them had fewer than 5% black patients represented. In 2018, out of 17 of these approved drugs, only one of them had at least 10%. So kind of the, the opposite of that. Why does this matter? It really matters. I gave a, a, a simple but, but yet um, good example, and there's many, many more. Um, doxyrubicin has increased cardiotoxicity in black populations because of the genetic differences in that population compared to other populations that typically are more involved in these clinical trials. So just let that sink in. We are creating drugs that may not work across the entire population because we're not looking at the entire population. Adding diversity to our scientists will help drive that diversity in the science that we do. And we truly believe this. This is why we, we want and foster that diversity. In triple negative breast cancer, as another example, among black and Latina women, they have a much higher predominance of triple negative breast cancer compared to the rest of the populations. In addition, they develop the disease more rapidly and have a higher mortality rate. Why is that? There's some hypotheses out there. Some of you may have even studied this this summer, but that question needs to be answered. It needs to be experienced. It needs to be looked into more. That diversity in science needs to continue to occur. I'm a cancer geneticist by training. I love genetics, so I have to end on a genetics example. In a recent study with 70,000 Latino or Hispanic individuals, 
what they looked at, this is not a cancer example, so I, I have to take my cancer hat off and just say genetics. They identified 42 previously unidentified loci in the human genome that were related to BMI height and hip to uh, waist ratio. Just think about that. Looking at a different population, we learn more about the human genetics because of the predominance of different features within different populations. So it's really important to continue to foster and, and grow that diversity in science. And I'm very proud to, again, look across this room, see the diversity, see all of the, all of the wonderful things that you guys have been working on. So really, what cool and diverse science you guys worked on this summer? I mean, I looked at the abstract book. I got a, I got a preview. Um, I got to look at it early. It's phenomenal. The work you guys did, I will highlight this again. You will not touch this type of science the rest of your high school career, the rest of your college career. You will be doing some really cool stuff in those time, but it's not going to be the next level that you guys were experiencing this summer. The only way that you can do that continue internships, continue those all the way through college. I can tell you, I did. I got to karyotype myself as a junior in college. It was kind of cool. But look at all the cancer types you guys looked at, breast, ovarian, colon, leukemia, lung, prostate, sarcoma, head and neck. The diversity within the wet and the dry lab projects, looking at new and old school lab techniques, old school like PCR and genotyping, all the way through spatial transcriptomics. These are really kind of cutting edge things. On the, dry, on the dry lab side though, you even have cutting edge technologies looking at computational tools like neural networks, machine learning, artificial intelligence. We, you guys looked at immune system involvement, genetic determinants of cancer, DNA damage, drug combinations, drug metabolism, drug development, viral involvement. Again, Pittsburgh is one of the rare places that has a very strong cancer virology program so we looked at three different cancer types that had some type of viral involvement, HPV, COVID, uh, KSHV. Finally, you guys ended with diversity in the diversity you guys are already bringing, looking at sex, race, and social determinants for cancer or cancer immunity. This is really fantastic work. I hope you guys all got a chance to look through what your colleagues did. And I really hope that as you continue to go on, you think back to this time and say, hey, guess what? I remember when I was with Linda. I don't know if there's a Linda in the crowd. Hopefully there is. It's a common name. Uh, and, and gosh, that was really cool what she worked on. Looking her back up, finding out, great, she's still in science. Let's talk. I'm in science. Let's start a collaboration. So I'm going to end with this. Thank you. Thank you to David, Joe, Solomon, and Stephen for organizing this. It really... It, the, the amount of work you guys have no idea. It starts tomorrow for next year. All of the mentors, all of the site directors, the, the guest speakers, the guests, all of the people, it wouldn't be what it is without you. The administrative support, Josh, Andrea, Vlad, Allison, Rayleigh, Lola, Gina, Scott, and Laura. Thanks to them as well. But most of all, thank you to you. Thank you to the students. Thank you to the parents. Thank you to the support. Without you guys, this program can't happen. Without you, there's really no future for science. We have no one to influence. We're able to influence you, hopefully in a really positive manner. So thank you guys, and congratulations again on finishing this. Really excited to have you be a part of our scientific community. Thank you, Devin. That was great. That was fantastic. Okay, so now, Deb, I should have you do this. You're so good at it from being in this room earlier. Uh, let me switch some presentations. And we'll share again. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where the Zoom went. Okay. I might. Yeah. 
yeah, it's like disappeared. Yeah, it won't go on it. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. There we go. Thanks, Deb. See, I knew we should have had you doing this. Okay. There we go. All right. So thank you again, Devin. Really, really appreciate it and the support of the Cancer Center and the Cancer Center leadership. Um, and I want to say, again, I want to start. We're going to do this a lot. We're going to uh, applaud a lot of people. But just please, students, give yourselves a round of applause. Parents, give them a round of applause. Mentors, congratulations. It's been so fun. So I, I remember, I mean, it was only seven weeks ago. It seemed like maybe longer for you. It was, seemed really short for me. When you were sitting in this room and we were doing the activity, we had to stand up and sit down that you guys all hated. Um, but we took this picture and I told you that I know you're nervous, that I know you don't know what you're going to be doing. And I know that you think it's going to be hard and it will be hard. But I also promise that you will be able to do it, that you would be able to get through the seven weeks. And the transformation I see every year it's the same as I saw it this year. It's amazing. And I'm so happy to see all of you in person or a lot of you in person. The last couple of years has been a lot harder when I didn't get to see you. So I'm, I'm thrilled that you're here. I'm thrilled that the families were able to join us and mentors and everyone in this room and thrilled that we now have the technology as flawed as it is for people to join us remotely and to watch remotely so that more people can be here and everyone can be involved. But I knew you would transition. I knew you would be working at microscopes You'd be pipetting in the lab, working with cell culture, probably throwing away more of these tubes than you ever thought existed or pipette tips, right? For those of you in the lab, working on machine learning, working, coding, doing so many different things. You know, I'm always asked, what will I be doing when I come? And I honestly say, I have no idea, right? Everyone's experience is so different. Uh, we had 100, over 190 mentors this summer, which is amazing, right? So I don't know what you're going to be doing until you come in. And, but, what I do know is at the end of the, the seven weeks, uh, and the slide that I added didn't get added, is that you guys all blow it away on this last day. And we're all here to celebrate with you. You all do an amazing job. And I'm just completely honored to be here with the future leaders of, uh, of science, uh, future leaders of everything. I know uh, the wealth of knowledge, the wealth of talent that's in this room, and it's uh, humbling to be part of it because I don't know what you guys are talking about half the time when you're giving presentations. It's awesome. Uh, it's so much fun to see you go from there to here and all the things that you get to experience while you're here. And you all come as different groups. We know this, we're one program, but there are many groups among us. Uh, we have the YES students here. Do you remember if you're a YES student? Yes, perfect. So we have some YES students. This was a program that was started right before the pandemic. So today is really exciting for me because it's the first time they've been in, in person and they actually participate for two straight years. So they never stop. Two summers of intensive research with year-wide work with me and with others asynchronously doing some other things. So the YES program, we're so glad to have you. Uh, the Doris Duke program, who remembers if they're in the Doris Duke? We got some here. Uh, the Doris Duke program has also funded us for over a decade gives you the opportunity to not only do research now, but to come back as undergrads in the future. We have some of them in the audience, like Pablo. Uh, we'd love to see people coming back from year to year and see how you grow from year to year as well. Uh, and these are our Doris Duke undergrads this year. Pablo's in the audience. Uh, I know Yash is at home. Michelle, I think, is here somewhere. There she is. And I think Ivy has had to leave too. But come back. Come back and, and be with us again. As Devin said, you're part of our family now. We want to help you get to where you want to go forever. So please come back. Uh, we have other students that are here too. We have some uh, new support from the Beckwith Foundation through Dr. Evans. So we have some students who are here at the surgery department who are paid in that way. We have students in ophthalmology through the Ear and Eye Foundation and the Hillman Foundation. And so we have lots of different groups. We have students who volunteer and come here and work with us over the summer. And it's, it's awesome to see all of you come together as one happy family um, and to get from where you are to here. So again, congratulations. But we're not done, right? There are opportunities right now and going forward immediately to take what you did this summer and to turn it into other opportunities, right? There are, for the YES students, you're gonna have to do this, right? You're gonna have to do at least two of these science fairs. 
but we have local science fairs. We have a, a couple of our students who participated last year. This was the first day that I met them in person after working with them for like nine months. So Sean and Tommy, uh, there's ISEF. We've had students who've qualified for the International Science and Engineering Fair. Google, NCWIT, over and over. NAACP has sponsors ones. Uh, Abercams has uh, things for high school students or at least did last year. So there's lots of opportunities to take the work that you did this summer and to tell more people about it. So go out and practice that communication, tell them about it because science isn't done until you, everyone knows about it, right? If you, if you find something amazing in your lab and don't tell anyone, you might as well not have found it, right? So go out and do more. Those who did computational projects, uh, again, we gave you the option to write your abstract and do your presentation in the exact same format. So there's no excuse for you guys to not apply to this, uh, the Amy High School Scholar Program that's due in a couple of weeks. And maybe one of you will be selected and you'll have a chance to go to DC and to talk with all of the medical informatics associations, world leaders, and because you'll be one of those soon enough. I mentioned already the Doris Duke undergrad, so there's a chance to come back with research. The Doris Duke undergrad internship, we'd love to have you back. There are REUs hosted by multiple people, including our associate director, Joe Ayub in Tech Bio. Those of you in Comp Bio definitely met them this year. The Summer Undergraduate Research Program is a huge, long-standing program here. Apply to that as undergrads and come back. And what I'm hoping is like me. I, I did a summer program like this in high school. And then when I was an undergrad, I went there in my junior year. I thought, I want to do research again. And because I've done research before, I felt at least confident enough to approach a faculty member who I thought was doing some cool stuff and saying, hey, you're doing really cool things. I've done this in the past. It's different, but I'd like to learn from you. And you'll be surprised if you do that, if you do it enough, expect failure some places, of how people will embrace you and want you to come and work at their lab, get university credit, possibly get paid, uh, and really in, you know, take advantage of the time that you have as an undergrad to keep doing cutting edge research so that you're impacting healthcare as we know it. And then there's more opportunities to be involved here. I know some of you are underclassmen, you can always apply for next year. First year, yes students, you're guaranteed admission next year. So I am very excited to see all of you. And hopefully next year we might have the dorms again. You know, that was the one thing that we still don't have this year. Um, if we do, we love to hire past students. So apply to be an RA, live in the dorms. But if you live in the dorms, we'll still put you in a research lab for the summer. So you'll get to do both things. So please come back. There's still many opportunities. Um, but I want to end before I start thanking everyone. It's doing, and we didn't plan this. I didn't see the slides. To say welcome to the family here at the Hillman Cancer Center. Again, give yourselves a round of applause. Well done. And so this is now we're transitioning into the part where I'm going to thank a million people. So we're going to give you lots of rounds of applause to lots of people because this program takes hundreds of people to put on almost every one of them are volunteers in some way. So I owe them so much. Uh, I, I'm indebted to all of these people that we're gonna thank. And that starts at the top. With the Cancer Center Director, Dr. Dr. Ferris, he's been very, very supportive of this program. Uh, I wish that he could have been here today. He wishes he could have been here today. He sends his well wishes to all of you. But I wanna thank uh, Dr. Ferris, the entire office, Dr. Ellis and all the senior research and admin leadership. Uh, and Dr. Beckinist, who is the chair of the Education and Training Committee. So not only the leadership of the Cancer Center, but also the leadership of the education that have here. So please, let's give them a round of applause. A huge thank you. And I don't even know if they're in a the room because there's 18 million things going on. So there they are. There's so many things going on all the time. You know, it's always, especially these end days get very frantic because there are a lot of things, a lot of moving parts. And uh, we could not do this program without these two individuals up there. I'm fortunate that we had two this year. It's the first time ever. We normally had one. I was really scared we weren't going to have any, but we ended up with two. So I got super lucky. So I want to say a thank you to Solomon. Solomon has been part of the program. This is his sixth or seventh summer. I can't even remember. It's been a long time. He and I have been partners running this program. He's seen it grow almost double in size, triple in funding. Uh, he helped to redo the website and the application portals that you've seen. All of you have emailed them over the time. Um, and he will be leaving us here in a couple of weeks. So we're sad about that. But I'd like to thank Solomon. If you would please give Solomon a round of applause. I don't even think he's here. He's outside somewhere doing other work. Because uh, again, we had eight sites. We, again, we apologize to those of you coming late with the bus. 
it's, it's hectic sometimes to manage a campus that's spread out over a few miles in a city on a Friday when there's traffic and we never know. Um, but as sad as I am to see Solomon leave, I am just as fortunate to have someone who stepped in and has, is absolutely amazing. I think it's absolutely perfect for the job. You don't know this. All of you have definitely talked to him this summer. Steven started two weeks before you. So Steven has been part of this program since June 1st, but you would have no idea that's true because of how amazing he is. Right? He's done an absolutely amazing job of just diving into the deep end. There's a million things that need to happen all the time. We embrace our flaws because there's always things that are going to go wrong, and he's bought into that so that we know there are things that are going to go wrong, but we'll fix them, and he finds a way to fix them. He finds a way to fix them without me. He jumps in. He does everything. He's so personable to work with. It's so fun to get to, to, get to know him, and I'm looking forward to the next, hopefully, seven or eight years of working with Stephen and see where the program goes next. So let's thank Stephen as well. The other big team of people who work uh, on the Hillman Academy all the time, we'll have our first meeting coming up very shortly, are all of the site heads. And they do so much work, right? So much work. The only reason this program's gotten bigger is because we've had more site heads. And each site head has colleagues. And they recruit those colleagues to come and mentor you. They recruit people to come and give lectures for you. So each of the eight sites, completely different curriculum. Why? Because they do all of that work. The site heads put everything together. They do everything for all of you. Uh, again, they, they put together the curriculum. They recruit the mentors. They worry about all of the administrative things. I mean, they might have help to do with all those things, but they do all of it. They do all of it from, and we give them very little to do all of it. So a big round of applause, and I'm going to say them all. So Andy Duncan, who's been here for, uh, for quite a few years, joined this year with Serafina for her first time in the Aging Institute. Thank you to Andy and Serafina. All the Tech Drive X better give them a better round of applause. Jenny at the WCRC, who's also been part of the program for many years. Greg and Tulia, who unfortunately both can't be here. They're uh, on the West Coast somewhere at a conference. But again, the beauty of them being able to put something together, even from afar, and getting people to run it on this last day. So let's give a round of applause to Greg and Tulia. And Deb and Malabika. Is Malabika here? I'm not sure. Oh, and Malabika is Malabika's in India. So to Deb, who's also been here for a very long time and running the cancer biology program, thank you to Deb. And then at, at Comp Bio or the, or the Cobras, we have uh, Dr. Ayub, Joe Ayub, and David Coase. I don't think David's here, but let's give Joe a round of applause. And we'll give Joe a second round of applause because he's the associate director of this program, and he and I meet every week to talk about the program and how we can make this program better. We'll start, maybe not next week. We might wait, take a week off, but we talk about this program all the time and try to make it better. You have some surveys to do. I haven't sent them yet. I'm going to send them as soon as we're done. Do the surveys because we'll talk about them so that we know how to make this program better. All right. So thank you, Joe. Another round of applause for Joe. And then we have two new sites that started kind of as a pilot last year. One is ophthalmology. So again, Dr. Chen Yanian came on. And again, this is the first time she's done it in person. But I don't think we got any customer. Everything seemed to go so smoothly. So thank you to Yanian. And our other newish partner, Dr. Evans, Steve, who came from surgery, said he called me up. He calls on the phone all the time. It's great. It's one of the few people I actually talk to on the phone. Uh, I get to talk to Steve, and he was about the ideas that he had and how we could work together and the things that he's brought for the surgery students. It's been absolutely wonderful. So, Steve, thank you. And so this, the site heads do a lot of work, but we all know that the lifeblood of this program are their mentors. And again, I told you this year, we had over 190 different people who have mentored for all of you. All of these people, 100% of them are not paid to do this. None of them get any money from the grants. None of them get anything except the joy of working with all of you and get to give back to, again, creating those future leaders or getting to work with the future leaders. So this program is just absolutely impossible without them. 
I want to, we could give a million round of applause for the mentors and all of the time that they spend with you. Please give a round of applause to the mentors. And we have eight different curriculums. So that means we have a lot of lecturers, instructors, guests. Here's another gigantic list that I won't read. It's in the abstract books for all of you who have it. But to all of the faculty, the graduate students, the postdocs, the fellows, to everyone who gave a lecture, who came and talked to you about their career path, who told you about any sort of curricular or career development or academic development things, let's please give them a big thank you. And being so large, we interface with basically the entire university. Uh, we are almost like our own little college. Stephen mentioned it to me yesterday. He's like, we're just a college, but we don't have as many people running it. Um, because we have to work with everyone. We work with the lawyers at University Council. We work with HR. We work with uh, the administration team, with the fiscal team. Again, Allison and Josh and everyone. The IT, IT purchasing, disability research services. Uh, wonderful interpreters to all of the administrators across the dozens of departments that we work through. Again, these people are behind the scenes all the time and we don't know they're there, but they're doing so much to support this program. So let's please give them all of a round of applause too. And I'm often asked, how do you find such great students? And I have to tell them again, we will start recruiting very soon for next year, but we don't, I don't find them. What I have done is we, we've been fortunate enough to build relationships with many of these organizations up here and they find them for us, right? We have amazing teachers in our community who I'm sure many of them recommended this program to you. Uh, community members, we're partners with Pittsburgh Public Schools. There are a couple of teachers there that are amazing. Dr. Waldeck, Dr. K, I don't know if they're here today, I know they were watching things earlier. Kashif Henderson at Pittsburgh Public Schools has been instrumental in helping to recruit. Uh, we partner with FAME. So Dr. Nelson at FAME, who's, uh, that's been a wonderful partnership of bringing in amazing students. The Homeless Children Education Funds, Propel and Powerhouse. Remake Learning that broadcasts you know, what we do all the time to everyone in the community. The Citizen Science Lab, the Allegheny Intermediate Unit, uh, STEM Push Network, other programs like the Gene Team here, the Pittsburgh Promise, and even some new partnerships with Gallaudet University. We had two faculty members from Gallaudet who mentored and helped to recruit students this year. Uh, we have amazing community members who promote for us and we work with. Uh, there's a student organization named Biozone who some of you wrote short scripts for, subscribe to their YouTube channel, always doing cool things that we try to help support. Uh, to community engagement centers in Kirk and we hope to work with them more the parents, the students, the other PIT programs, the biology networks, I could go on forever, but I'm just indebted to the community that we live in for connecting me with all of you. So let's say thank you to all of the community. And then let's also thank everyone who's here, right? I have a 16 year old too, so I know of how much work it takes to get people to different places or the amount of trust it takes to trust them to ride a city bus an hour each day. Um, so thank you to all the parents for trusting us enough to send your students here for the summer, for giving us the opportunity. We know that it takes a lot of sacrifice for you to be able to, to do that and to allow them to come and to get them here. So thank you so much to all the parents, guardians, families, friends who helped with our students get here, please a round of applause. And we couldn't do any of this without money. Unfortunately, our, our main support comes from the, the NCI. They've been big supporters for a long time and, and fund oh, probably 75% of our program. The Doris Duke program, the Cancer Center, the Hillman Foundation through the Ear and Eye Foundation directly to us, the University, Beckwith Institute, the Grable Foundation sent me to Finland to talk about this program, which was really cool. Uh, the Jack Kent Cook Foundation, the Shadyside Hospital Foundation paid for the bus this year. Uh, UPMC has given us uh, money from different various things over the years. Grateful parents and patients have donated to us. So please, a special thank you to all of our funding and support.
And let's not forget the mentors in this, right? So all of them are donating reagents to you. They're donating their time. All of these things are money. Uh, so please, let's thank the mentors another time for the giving of this. Okay. So we're not done. Oh, go ahead. So he's not going to thank himself, but I think we need to give David a round of applause. Thank you. And we're almost done, I promise. And we're going to start with the graduation. This is the last thing, is we're not done. I told you about other opportunities to do, but there are some tasks that I need you to do, that I want you to do. Please stay in touch with us. The only way we can continue to help, if we can help, is if we know. So please stay in contact with us. We have surveys to do. I promised we wouldn't do too many, and we didn't, right? We did one at the beginning. I'm going to send you one today. Everyone, please do that survey. If you are supported by the Doris Duke, there are two surveys. Yes, this is the link to it. I will also email it to you. The Doris Duke students, I'll send you a separate email. It's directly to the funder. I don't even see the results for that. But it's very critical that you do that so that they know that you're here, you're engaged. Answer honestly, but please do uh, the surveys. Uh, computational students, that Amy Abstract submission is due in like three weeks. Let me know if you need any help with it, but please submit there. Yes, students, be on the lookout. I'm going to be contacting you within the next couple of weeks. We'll set up our September meeting. And it'll be on Zoom. Everything will be, most things will be asynchronous. We'll, I'll introduce everything we're going to do in that September call, but be on the email or be on the lookout. And then finally, answer our emails. Um, we will only send you very few emails. We're not going to spam you. We'll send at least once every year asking where you are, what you're doing. How can we help? Very basic things. Please respond to that. Uh, and then we might send ones here and there of opportunities that we see that come up and be like, oh, this would be awesome for these students. I'm going to put that out. But that's it. We're not going to spam you for anything else. So when we, e when we email you, please respond. The other thing is the Discord server. We started in 2020 almost out of necessity whenever we were all in lockdown. Uh, but now we're just adding to it every year. I don't plan on ever shutting that down. So every new group that comes in will be added right there. So continue to engage on the Discord with each other, with us. Uh, you know, it's there for you to create the community, whatever you want, uh, but please keep working on it. And then lastly, spread the word. So I'm so happy that there, there are a lot of siblings here, of people who came before. We even have a group of sisters who are here. Uh, we have friends who tell friends about the program, and that's how we grow too. Please tell your friends if you think there's someone who would be great, or your younger siblings, or the, the younger siblings that I see in the room. I hope I see them in 15 years whenever they're, they're coming back. Um, but we have, again, this great, just to come back to science, this great feed-forward network uh, that I, I've noticed. So because we have great students, we're able to recruit great mentors. And because we have great mentors, we're able to recruit great students. And I want to just keep amplifying that and having that go forward. All right? So with that, I want to say thank you to all of you. So one more congratulations to all of the students. In the next part, I'll just talk a little bit of the logistics of our now graduation ceremony. Each site head is going to talk for just a couple minutes, I promise, probably thanking more people, uh, potentially even talking about their mentors and what mentorship's been meant to them and how that's got to where they are today. Because we hope, again, you know, our mission is to give you a real research experience and give you a mentorship. So we're hoping we're starting with that mentorship. Uh, but we're going to have each site head will talk. As soon as they talk, they're going to read the names of, the, of their site. I ask that once they're finished talking, everyone from that site to come down. We have certificates that we'll give you, and then we'll take pictures at the end of the entire group for each one of the eight sites, okay? We, I know I have a student who needs to go to work who's already like an hour late. So we're gonna do the surgery first, and then we'll do tech drive XR second, I promise. So Steve, do you wanna come up? Thank you all, thank you all. Can you, all of my surgery site uh, students please come and I'll do this rapidly. I just wanna thank uh, all of you for the opportunity to even let me have uh, uh, the oversight of these young, brilliant minds. Uh, and first of all, thank you to my mentors from the Department of Surgery, uh, Dr. Dupar, just line up right here, uh, Dr. Dupar, uh, Dr. Leeper, Dr. Nathan Lang, Dr. Amr Zirkat, and also Josh, Dr. Josh Brown and uh, Dr. Joseph Church. 
And so before you, we have uh, our young uh, Michael Ulich, who is a, a rising senior, did a phenomenal job with his presentations today and was mentored by uh, Dr. Church. We can go ahead and you can receive yours. And Anaya Hall also is now going to graduate and she's already graduating and going to LSU. So a great future ahead. We're convincing her to do a JDMD program. <laughs> yes. And here, and, and we have Raynell Durham, who is also a wonderful student for the summer and work with Dr. Josh Brown. Looking forward to having her come back to us in the future. She worked with Dr. K, who's going to continue to help her be a budding a science researcher. And our special uh, Lucy Poo has been outstanding in her work with Dr. Dupar. She found me. She found Dr. Dupar. An outstanding presentation. Also, rising junior. Correct? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and we have Jer Jeremiah Satcho, also a rising senior. Did a great job this summer in working with our uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Zurichat. And we look forward to having him come again next year. And Sean Russell, who is already in the uh, uh, pictured above, is going to be uh, entering Stanford uh, this year. And we look forward to all his future work with us and been with us for over two years and been a great pleasure. So give them all a round of applause. has been the voice on the other phone and I emailed and it couldn't be possible without Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Next, we'll have Tech Drive X. All right, thank you guys. Um, this has been a great, great summer. And I wanna tell you a little bit about Tech Drive X, and then we're gonna tell you a little bit about mentors because I think everybody's learned a lot about mentors and hopefully you've developed relationships that are gonna help you uh, over the next years and maybe for your entire lives. So this is our group, um, uh, 12 fantastic individuals and you'll see their pictures a couple more times. So just very briefly, Tech Drive X, uh, we don't study just immunology. We don't say just cancer. We're a potpourri of uh, different things. Uh, we, you know, our research ranges from aging and bioengineering down to pathology uh, and liver research, lots of different stuff. And the idea is let's figure out basic mechanisms and maybe we can translate that into some, some outcomes, uh, whether that's cancer or, or other uh, conditions. So these are our students. And, and just to really hammer home the idea that we have diversity, if you look at this, uh, you can see all kinds of stuff that I've put in bold. So ovarian carcinoma, cancer cell health, hearts, muscle aging, coronavirus, drug discovery, and so on. Lots of different stuff that we're doing. And these guys did a fantastic job this morning. So just like David was saying, many, many thanks to all the mentors. Uh, we had probably 50 different mentors uh, at our site for 12 students. Um, oh, by the way, I'm Andy Duncan. This is Serafina Lana. Uh, we're the... <laughs> <laughs> we're the directors of this thing. Um, anyway, many, many thanks to all the uh, mentors that, that very selflessly uh, gave their time and resources. So what I want to tell you about is I think everybody has uh, developed relationships with people in their labs, whether it's the graduate student or postdoc or even the PI. And I'm just going to tell you three very brief stories about my mentors. So this is Tanisha Rea. She was my graduate school advisor. Um, back uh, from 2001 to 2005. I was at Duke at the time. Uh, she was just starting her lab um, and, and really taught me a lot. And I think uh, the, the, the three big things she taught me right here are ask hard questions. You know, if it's an easy question, a lot of people are doing it. That's why we're doing research. So ask the hard questions. She said, never take no for an answer. We had a paper that got rejected and rejected and rejected. And the editor said, don't send this back. What do we do? We sent it back and it got in. So don't take no for an answer. And then inspire others with your passion. 
And I think that's true. You know, if you're excited about something, you're going to make other people excited about it too. And sure enough, she was just a fantastic person and a friend and still is to this day. Next person is my postdoc mentor. This is Marcus Grumpy. I was a postdoc at Oregon Health and Science University. And he really, you know, embraced this idea of think outside the box. If somebody thinks that's a crazy idea, it's probably a cool idea. So maybe it's worth pursuing. Some people, you hear the expression, it is what it is. So in our lab, we said the data are the data. You know, if you find this, that's what it is. Don't worry about it. You know, you got to figure out how to make it work. And he really embraced the idea that I think many of you may have learned this summer in your own labs, which is the work hard and play hard uh, philosophy. So this is really what Marcus taught me. Um, yeah. And then lastly, I want to tell you about this person. This is uh, Dr. Lara Mint. I would call her uh, one of my lifelong mentors. So this is a person who is uh, a pediatric neurologist. She has a research lab. She's the dean of the medical school uh, at Yale University. She's sort of a perpetual overachiever. She also runs marathons. Um, has probably done 45 different marathons at this point. She's 72 years old. And she really taught me you need to prioritize, you know, figure out what's really important to you, love what you do, and never stop running. So this is her. I also call her mom. So this is my mom right here. Um, and I think that she really taught me a lot just about being a scientist and just kind of pushing through all these different things. So this is Tech Drive X, and we're going to call your names. Yep, come on down. We had a couple of them who didn't show up. Who are left? Franco Alvarez, who worked with Dr. Matt Steinhauser. Sophia Alvarez, siblings, uh, who completed her second year and she worked in the Zerva lab with uh, Dorota. Elise Chu, who worked with Dr. Bill Chen's lab at the Aging Institute and worked with Anya and uh, Travis. Griffin Hurt, who is not here, who was uh, online, who also worked in the Zerva lab. Priyasha Itani, who worked with Dr. Justin Weinbaum and whose mentor was Isabel. And then uh, Tabo Makondawire, who worked with the Ambrosio Lab, whose mentors were Gabrielle Gilmer and Zachary Edinger. We're splitting the task and names here. Uh, next up, we've got Tomi Alore. Uh, we've got Arnav Patel. Uh, oh, okay. He, he had a doctor's appointment. <laughs> um, uh, Noren Ray. Uh, Sid Sadashiv. Uh, Nikita Venkatasami. And lastly, Julian Westray. And so please give these guys a big round of applause. All right, next will be Deb and CB. Hi, everyone. So I'm going to start off with uh, little stories about my mentors. So it actually started in high school. 
uh, Mr. Hugo Polakemi, great name for a chemistry teacher, but he was also an amazing guy because I was a pest and I just peppered him with questions. I was trying to trip him up all the time. And we would write little repartees back and forth to each other on my exams. And he just put up with it all. Um, and Mr. Ed Robinson, my biology teacher, who took about five of us and let us do a fetal pig dissection at, during lunch instead of lunch. Um, and, you know, and he's the one who told me to apply to a program like this. It was a, it was a, did I write? It's actually, sorry, it wasn't NIH. It was an NSF high school summer program at Syracuse University and wrote my recommendation letter and got me in. Um, and the guy I worked for then was James Florini, Syracuse University. He was my, my summer high school program faculty mentor. And then I started university there that fall and he let me keep working in his lab. Um, and he's the one who taught me how to really run a lab. Uh, you know, label every bottle. He would go through the lab and chuck things out if he saw them not fully labeled. It didn't matter if you were halfway done. Out they went. And you could keep your lab notes so thorough that if you run over at lunch, someone could walk into the lab and finish your experiment that afternoon. I'm not sure I've quite lived up to that, but I try. I am. That's one part of my life where I was always anal with my lab notes. Um, but he was, also, he was also an example of something that was very unique at the time. He was somebody who had been in industry and he moved to the academic world. And this was you know, mid-career change. In those days, nobody went from industry to academics. It was unheard of. Um, so he was a, um, you know, just a, a leader in that. He also flew planes. Um, oops. So then in um, graduate school, uh, my graduate advisor was a very out of the box guy. And, you know, basically was let your imagination go, follow the data. It was very useful for me being very ADD to work with an ADD type guy. Uh, connecting up my postdoc, uh, David Hausman, who's kind of covered up by that thing. Uh, at MIT, connecting all the detours, oh, Larry was at Brandeis, yeah. Connecting all the detours to the grant you were supposed to have done. And that's when you have to write what you did for your grant. And then uh, we did team grant writing. It was a great learning experience. He also was a last minute itis kind of guy. We actually used to fly. He would have one of us fly with the grant down and drive it up and dump the boxes. We used to have to do 20 copies and dump the whole thing right at the door at NIH. Uh, and Frank Bunn was my first faculty position um, at Harvard and was under, oh, what was that thing? Out of the way. So we had a bit of a clash of generational cultures, but I learned to stay the course and fight back. He's a very smart guy, by the way, don't mistake me, but he was very old school. So Steve Goldman recruited me to my first independent faculty position at the MGH arthritis unit at Harvard, convinced me to move into bone and connected me with senior people in the world, in the field. He really was an amazing mentor in that respect. Um, and I got recruited to Pittsburgh by Dave Rudman, who's since left and gone on to Indiana. Um, and he made me move into myeloma. Uh, it was one of the bone diseases that I worked on. Um, he taught me how to keep my writing short and direct. I still struggle with that, but at least I think about it when I'm writing. And keep publishable units in mind as you work. You learn different things from different mentors. And you might need to have multiple kinds of mentors in your life that you look for different types of learning. So I want to really thank uh, Malabika Sen, who couldn't be here today, who really helped me tremendously this year. And uh, Andrew Orenberg, who just uh, is a, he's a second year, just starting his second year of grad school and has an amazing future as a teacher. Um, and he really stepped in when I was on vacation for a week and Malabika got COVID. And so he just led the program for that week. Uh, so these are all the PI mentors, Tim Burns, Yvonne Chow, Catherine Damanales, Wei Du, Zhou Zheng Gao, Haitaguo, Atiche Osman Beoglu, 
Taofi Ganawani Koko, Shabendra Singh, Kurt Weiss, Jian Yu, and Yun Zhang. Those 12 people, uh, two of them took two students. So we had 14 students at uh, CB. And you can see there's an even longer list of all the lab men mentors who actually worked with the students. And then we had uh, various speakers who came in to talk about both science and, and life uh, and how to be a college student um, and in what, how to access resources. Uh, the top one, I just want to make a call out is my daughter. Rebecca Arendt. Um, and uh, so at any rate, we had just amazing help, as you can see. And it really takes a village to run this program. Uh, so a shout out to Yash Patel, who's uh, the uh, Doris Duke undergraduate intern that uh, gave his talk with uh, the CB group. He is now at Vassar University. And he was a CB uh, high school student when he was uh, here, so he's a CB alum even before he became a Doris Duke undergrad here. And these are our amazing students that we've had this year. And uh, a bit of a rogues gallery from some headshots we took the first day, <laughs> except for the two who weren't here for one reason or another. So um, in spite of the fact that you're standing up against a door, <laughs> it kind of worked out. So. Um, I guess you guys should come on down and we will do your certificates. So these have been a truly amazing group. They've been friendly, supportive of each other, um, very participatory in our lab meetings. Oh, you know what? You're alphabetic and I'm not here. Oh, it's even worse. No, it doesn't matter because this is enough. That I'm not going to worry about it. They've already heard the mentors and all that. Enough. We'll just do their names. All right, that's fine. We're going to go reverse. That's fine. Yeah. So da Daniel Wang. Daniel. Oh, did he leave already? Okay. That one, Daniel. Um, Maria, is here somewhere? Hi there. How are you? Maria Salagio. Rubran Raman. Congratulations. Audrey Monroe Neal, there you are. Ethan Minzer, there you are. Davi. McGraw's. There we go. Hi. Kate Maldia, sea of people. Anthony Calvi, here somewhere. And really, all of you deserve huge congratulations. Daniel Guo, there you are. Nancy Chen, there you are. Jason. Jason Chen. Hilary Boizo, Ahmed Ali, Nag Ali Al Nagash. There you go. Where are you hiding? There you are. Hey, and Donovan Allen, thank you. <laughs> All right. So I just want to have everybody clap one more time for these amazing students. They worked really hard. Uh,
All right, next, Dr. Ayub in the Cobras. Okay, well, uh, yeah, again, congrats to everyone. Um, I'm Joe Ayub from uh, the CompBio Research Academy or COBRA Academy, uh, as we've been calling it. Um, I thought this was a talk about uh, family members, so I apologize. So uh, this is uh, grandma and grandpa, Uncle Enrique, and my two dads. Uh, if you haven't guessed, this isn't my family. These are, these are my mentors. Uh, so <laughs> don't tell them I called them grandma and grandpa, please. <laughs> Uh, this is Gene and Joe Sanger. These, they were my undergraduate advisors uh, and gave me my first experience in research. Uh, I was with them for five years, actually, an undergraduate, and then afterwards, when I was figuring out what to do with my life, and they played a, a fundamental role in that. Um, so much so, I actually called her mom one day, accidentally. Uh, that's how much they meant to me. Um, they still do. Uh, Uncle Enrique was somebody I met uh, in that position, actually, too, and he was a postdoctoral fellow. Um, in a lab next door and just really had such uh, an inspirational um, uh, effort for, on, on, for me. And I remember telling him, you know, I can't go to grad school. I don't know how to do this. I can't write a million dollar grant, all this stuff. And he's like, you know what? You're right. You can't. I think I told you this story at the beginning too, uh, but they're going to teach you how to do that. You know, I think that was the same. And I hope you all experienced something like that this summer too. And you realize that, yes, you're, you're going into something. It's a little bit daunting, but uh, with a good support network, with good mentors around you, too, uh, you can accomplish those things. Uh, and then my two scientific dads, uh, Alex Kolotkin uh, and uh, John Minden, were my graduate advisor and my, my PhD advisor. And again, the Sangers sort of introduced me, uh, Enrique encouraged me, and they really equipped me with the skills that I needed uh, to be successful in science. Um, and I think all of them though, together too, demonstrated to me the importance of mentoring. Um, you know, as a first generation high school student, you know, I didn't really know what I was getting into uh, in, in college, even in high school and in college. I wish I had a high school program like this to take part in, uh, but it wasn't, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here today for sure. And um, you know, because of all the hard work and dedication and just selflessness too that they, they showed me, um, that's become something that's been super important for me. Uh, in my career. And, um, you know, it's uh, for those at our site, they know that we make our undergraduates get involved in mentoring. And I would encourage you all too, uh, to become mentors and to get involved in mentoring. Yes, you're, you're sort of on the receiving end of it all now, but there's also, you have other ways to give now and you will uh, even more so moving forward. So I would encourage you all uh, to think about that and, and keep that in your perspective. Uh, I'm selfish when it comes to mentors. I want a lot uh, and I've had so many other people too that, that have helped me along the way. I love mentors so much that I've created two, two, or at least helped to create two. Those are my kids. Uh, and they've taught me things just on a whole nother plane as well. Um, and just so many other uh, people that, you know, I'm grateful for that have, you know, taken the time uh, for me. And I, um, I uh, try to keep that in mind and keep in touch with them and uh, remind them just the impact that they've had on me. And again, I would encourage you all to do that for your mentors too. So uh, some thank yous, uh, Adam Kolhas and David Coes, uh, who are a part of Team Cobra. Uh, David and I uh, run the program together, and Adam and I, he does all the coordination for it. They're an invaluable resource for me. We, we do this as a team together, uh, and they've been uh, just supremely helpful. Uh, just so many other people, uh, Dr. Yvette Pahar, who's our department chair, who uh, just allows us to, to do this too, and gives me the freedom to, to do a lot of these different efforts. Uh, so I always uh, thank her for her continued support. Uh, the rest of our computational systems biology department staff and faculty who, um, again, just uh, behind do so many things behind the scenes to, to help the program run. Uh, our, our RU students for the summer who uh, we make them serve on committees because I want to share the pain of committee work with them at an early age. Uh, but uh, they have a mentoring committee and they work with our high school students and uh, I'm always indebted to them for, for the help that they do and even in their busy summers as well. Uh, so I'd like to thank them also. Uh, of course, our, our COBRA mentors, um, you know, they, uh, they're the lifeblood of the program. We can't do the program without having these selfless mentors, as, as David has reminded us uh, many times, and they should be thanked uh, that many times, too, for all of their great work. Uh, yeah, and then, of course, uh, biggest thank you to our uh, COBRA scholars, the, the Pythons, as they were nicknamed this summer. I think by the undergraduates. So um, I'd like to have them come down now. I'm going to read their names as they're coming down. So I'd love to hear a, first a big round of applause for them as they come down. 
So come on down, guys. Orion, I see you sitting there. Let's go. Yeah. So <laughs> come on down. I was, we were actually talking about having entrance music for our talks this morning. And maybe next year, I think that's what we're going to do for this is we'll have everybody uh, have their own uh, entrance music. But uh, Fatima, Orion, Toby, Neil, uh, Sophia, and Ananya that were with us in person. Uh, and then Maria, uh, Yvonne, Max, and, and Akiva, who are online. Uh, you guys just did a phenomenal job this summer, and uh, congratulations once again. So, thank you. If any of the online Cobras want to put on their video, then you will be in this picture. And we will mail these certificates and abstract books to all of you online uh, students as well. Next, we have the ophthalmology site, Yan Yan Chen. So congratulations for the ophthalmology site uh, scholars. And uh, I didn't prepare slides for my mentors, but I want to share with you my own story. So my uh, initial small fire in my own heart was my really deep, deep interest in animals and plants and how they uh, interact with us. So I was grown up basically every weekend uh, spending on the zoo. And my, my initial dream job was becoming a zookeeper until one day Jane Goodall, that famous uh, observer for chimpanzees visited my high school, which really thrilled me when I was sit like six foot away from her and uh, to look at this real person so calm and sharing her life stories uh, and her interactions with Chimp. So, and then I um, traveled from Beijing to Shanghai to get my undergrad. And after that, uh, I learned a little bit more about what life science is and met uh, a lot of very supportive mentors in my courses. And also uh, I met a a bunch of great friends. So we all want to uh, get even farther from our homeland to search for where the frontier of science is. And here I am, I came to United States in 2004 and started my PhD and learning a technique called Raman spectroscopy. It's really, um, it's a, like an older technique, but from that technique, I learned uh, basically how molecular uh, interaction functions and how uh, computational calculation can uh, help us understanding how the small and macromolecules works uh, to interpret the bio reactions in the biological system. Uh, I, I was following an, a British gentleman who was my PhD mentor. He gave me a tremendous uh, patients and uh, this old school style of uh, research. Every time he asked me to print out my slide and data, and he will sit there with a cup of English tea and a ruler and a piece of pencil and very calm every night afternoon and trying to tell me this peak is alpha helix, that peak is uh, beta sheets. Oh, we have a ma magnesium ion binding to this protein. Probably that interpret what's happening during a catalysis. Uh, so uh, I spent a really nice uh, six years with him uh, when I also give birth to twin boys 
voice. And when I graduated, I headed to another lab when I joined vision research. I started really learn how fascinating eyes are and how we can use uh, what I learned from biochemistry uh, uh, and, and adapt that into pharmacology and trying to uh, find, prob uh, find solutions to, to help blinding people. So um, basically that is my journey and I have met so many wonderful people, including mentors. And also I keep meeting new people uh, and including my current uh, faculty mentor, uh, Dr. Jeff Gross and my own chair, uh, Dr. Jose Elaine Sahel. So when I look, I always found that in the journey of my own growth, I have somebody to look up to who uh, really, um, uh, inspired me a lot. And actually science has been really done by humans. And uh, if you look at textbook stories, those are idealized models. But if you really dig into everybody's journey, you get in touch with them and share the story, how they really find each and individual uh, stories. Uh, you find uh, how challenging it, it is and you start to respect uh, even your own work. Um, so basically that's it. And let's share. Uh, so here is the seven uh, great mentors who voluntarily joined uh, to participate and uh, involved in this program. Uh, Dr. Vishal Janji is a physician sci uh, scientist uh, working teamed up with Dr. Gary Yam and they uh, are taking care of Jar uh, Jasmine Fortnett. And Dr. Uh, Patrick Mayo is working on visual cortex. And uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, I messed up. Uh, Gary and uh, Jen, Dr. Genji is working with Skylar. And Patrick Mayo is working with uh, Jasmine Horton. And they are working on some very cool stuff of a video game. When uh, somebody is working on video game, how your eye is moving and where it is focused during this uh, uh, highly interactive uh, procedure. And Dr. Xiaohua Pi is a new uh, PI in our department and he's uh, taking care of uh, Marcus Jones and they are working on some very cool 3D printing project by setting up very uh, uh, frontier cutting edge uh, OCT imaging equipment. And here is me with, uh, with uh, Jonathan Lee, and we are trying to uh, figure out genotyping PCR technology, uh, old school technology, and trying to uh, using that method to explain to him how important it is each for each and single animal model uh, and make sure they are what they are before we step into the next step. And then uh, Dr. Robert Shanks is working with Daniel uh, Kolomsky, and uh, they are uh, trying to figure out a newer version of a green fluorescence protein to uh, target uh, biomolecular markers and uh, trying to find uh, like the second generation molecular markers for, as uh, molecular tools. And then Dr. Yiqin Du, she's an ex uh, She's an MD, PhD, and um, she's leading Samuel uh, for a very cool stem cell research. And they are using OCT imaging to analyze uh, the result of untreated and treated animals. So here are some ongoing pictures when each of the scholar are uh, doing some experiments. Uh, including the video game that I'm showing here. Uh, and um, when the student is working on the game, uh, there is a tracker on the student's eye uh, to uh, watch where she is looking at. And uh, yeah, that is the very cool 3D print printing gadget setting up on a physical table and setting up all this imaging system that the other two students are currently using. So during our roundtables, we are really setting up a, a diverse uh, curriculum, including some basic introduction about visual science, about how our brain works to recognize, uh, to form vision and uh, uh, the retinal diseases. 
And then uh, we have some seminars uh, discussing science, career, and life. And uh, also we have a nice discussion with I and year people uh, to look at uh, other staff member working in the scientific field indirectly. And also we discussed basically about how to do a presentation and do a research article reading and searching for scientific data. So these are the summary of the projects. Um, and you can find them in the abstract. And we also enjoyed food. So this is a tradition I adopt from my PhD mentor. He have a, a great wife who is always generous on um, lab members when I was PhD student. So uh, really spoiled me with a very picky taste. So I want to pass on that to all the scholars here and just enjoy life, find interest in life and be excited. Um, we also want to thank our chair who uh, is really uh, supportive to our program and uh, the foundation, the year I and year foundation people who has given us a lot of administrative support. And uh, also a lot of people in the department are also helping in the background, including postdocs and professors giving guest lectures and uh, medical doctors giving uh, lectures. And we had a picnic and had some fun with Frisbees. And, and that's it. And congratulations and all the I people come. Oh, okay. Should I? Samuel Wilson, congratulations. Skylar Spears, congratulations. Jonathan Lee, congratulations. Daniel Komlasi, congratulations. Marcus Jones, congratulations. Jasmine Horton, congratulations. And thank you for your participation. Next, we have WCRC with Jenny. Thank you. I'm going to follow the previous couple of folks and tell you a little bit about my background and some of the mentoring in my career briefly, then a few fast thank yous and uh, we'll wrap up the WCRC site. So um, I first started um, in a high school program, just like you guys. Mine was at the Babram Institute in Cambridge in England. You can probably still tell from my accent I'm from England. I've been in the US 15 years, but I'm told people can still tell that I'm not native, so that's okay. When I go home, I'm told I speak like an American, so we'll see. Um, but this is where I have my high school um, research experience. You can see it's a really beautiful building. The secret is inside it's really old, nothing like the labs that we're in here today, but it inspired me to continue uh, working in science and really uh, encourage my love of science. Uh, I did my graduate studies at the University of Bradford in England. And some of the key things I learned from my mentors here, um, as well as obviously the science that I was learning, I worked in cancer research. I learned a lot about biology and drug development. I learned a, a key thing that all scientists have to learn and you have to learn this early, and that is perseverance. Experiments are gonna fail, hypotheses are gonna be wrong. You've got to stick with it. You've got to ask the next question. You've got to figure out how you can move forward. I also learned people management, which sounds like a bit of a strange thing to highlight, um, but these are my three advisors, and you can, this was my graduation day. We have really cool robes at Bradford University. Um, and 
we're all smiling in this picture. We look like we all get on really well and that we're a really solid team. That wasn't really the reality for most of my graduate school career. So um, my three mentors didn't see eye to eye on many things. Um, and so I would have to get uh, sort of develop skills to enable me to um, convince them that an idea was good that didn't come from the other PI. And maybe I, I was the one that thought of this or they did like the idea, but they didn't. But maybe the third guy would agree. So it was um, an, an interesting training, put it that way. So it fueled my passion for science. I loved cancer research, but I had to learn to deal with personalities that maybe didn't naturally work well together. And that's like an important life skill for anywhere you work. So that was definitely something from my graduate school career. Um, it was after graduate school that I moved to the US and I moved to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And many of you will have heard of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital from the TV adverts, from getting asked to donate a dollar from the um, big advertisements you do, uh, you see on the billboards. Um, actually, in England, we'd never heard of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. They approached me at a conference and were said, oh, we're recruiting for postdocs. And uh, Elvis is from Memphis, Tennessee, and you should probably come and visit us. I actually now have a dog called Elvis. This is part of the reason. Um, but St. Jude, as you know, is doing really phenomenal research and they have really phenomenal resources. And so actually my boss, Richard Gilbertson, who's um, the guy in glasses on this middle picture, he's actually also a Brit. So maybe that made the transition easier. Um, we worked on a type of um, childhood brain tumor called ependymoma. And it was really at St. Jude that they encouraged me, you know, to dream big. They said, the only limitations are your own ideas. And at first I was like, well, that sounds pretty scary. <laughs> but there was a lot of truth in that. You know, you have to come up with the ideas. You have to um, really do what it takes to, to get you to the next level. And so St. Jude was a really inspiring place to do that. They also, I also learned to work hard and play hard. So to be successful in science or in any career, you need to work hard, right? You need to invest time and effort and energy. But you also need to put a lot of time into those other things that bring you happiness outside of work. So I met my husband when I was a postdoc at St. Jude Research Hospital. I made a large network of friends who were also scientists and now their careers have taken them all over the place. It really helped to build my network as well. I actually went to industry for a while and I worked at Eli Lilly and Company first as a, uh, a researcher and then as a research scientist and then as a group leader. Uh, and this is Anya Stauber. She was uh, the director of toxicology at the time. Um, and she taught me, I, I transitioned from cancer biology into toxicology. And she kind of said to me that, you know, you're not a toxicologist, but all of your skills that you've learned doing cancer biology, uh, you, you need those in toxicology. You just need to look from a different angle. Um, and so she really helped me to see my transferable skills, how to have confidence in your knowledge, even if it's not directly relevant or you can't immediately see how directly relevant your skills might be to a new question. Um, so she taught me to be flexible and have confidence in that knowledge and that you can be a valuable team member when you're not the expert at the table. Your questions, because you come from a place of, uh, you know, less knowledge can still help those people more experienced than you to think through, yeah, why, why are we doing it that way? A lot of the time we're doing it that way because we always did it that way. And it takes someone new at the table to start questioning those things. And so that's super valuable. And then finally, now here at University of Pittsburgh, I work with Adrian Lee and Steffi Ustreich. Uh, and they've really just, they kind of exemplify for me that you need to do something you're passionate about. Work will always be a large part of your life. And so if you're not enjoying what you're, what you're working on and what you're doing, then you need to find you know, a new direction. So um, they are super passionate about breast cancer research. I think all of our breast cancer group here are, um, but they really exemplify that for me. And they listen to their mentees, which of course is always super important. Uh, one key thing that I should put on this slide is that Steffi in particular has really taught me the importance of the ability to, to um, delegate. And I say this because actually some of the students can attest to this in, our, in the WCRC program. I haven't spent a lot of time with them this summer. I feel a bit guilty about that as the course director, but I delegated a lot of our lectures, a lot of our classes, a lot of the work to other people in my, uh, in my group. I found, great uh, I found great trainees, postdocs, students that wanted to teach lectures. They wanted teaching experience. They wanted to have um, the opportunity to mentor high schoolers. And so I recruited them to do a lot of the work. So I did a lot behind the scenes, setting the schedule, uh, making sure we got the opportunities for our students, but I actually only taught one class myself. Um, and then some, some sessions this week to prepare for the presentation. So that's a key thing to learn how to do. 
So I know time is tight and I, I ran through a lot of these thank yous this morning. So I'm not gonna go through everyone's name, but these are the uh, principal investigators at WCRC site um, who hosted students this year. Their trainees who mentored the, high, high, the academy students. Um, and then other folks that um, uh, taught classes um, and mentored as well. And again, thank you to all of those folks. Uh, of course, oh, okay, this might be an old version of my slides. Thank you to the trainees. There was supposed to be a big picture of them here. That's my bad. I've dropped the wrong version. Um, and again, you know, thank you obviously to Dave and um, the whole team that makes all of this possible. So I think the WCRC students could come down and we can get you your certificates. Okay, first up, I have Olivia. Congratulations. Anisha. Yeah, Isaiah, congratulations. Denise, congrats. Joy, <laughs> thank you. And finally, Sophie. Oh, Sophie's not here. Oh, we have Michelle as well. We're doing the... Oh, I have Michelle here. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I didn't realize that. There you are. I was trying to hand you Sophie's, and I'm like, wait, you're not Sophie. That was <laughs> awesome. Well, I think a quick round of applause. Awesome. Uh, next, we're going to have ICI, but unfortunately, Greg and Tuli aren't here. So ICI, just come on down. We're just going to do it right now. I know I will fail. They did record something, and I'll put it on Discord, so you can all see it later. But it won't work if I try to do it right now, for sure. Awesome, thank you. All right, so Solomon's gonna help me here. So we have Helen Zhang, Camilla Wiley, Marcus Waller. Oop, I might've gave you a fourth one. Go ahead. Jenna Trent, John V. Sharmi, uh, Leah Omer. She's hanging out. Ilian, who's on the screen. Honorary Cosby for coming to all the Cosby events this year. Uh, Grace and Sui. And then the best jump shot in all of, or all of the Hillman Academy, Alessandra. You heard me. <laughs> Congratulations. Next, we're going to have Cosby, so you're stuck with me again, but we're going to go quick because this is easy going last because everyone's already said everything that they learned from their mentors, and it's all true for my many great mentors, so I'll just put on the screen, and we're going to keep moving. Had some great people teach me some all the wonderful things you've heard, and I hope that you have wonderful mentors and that people you've met here become some of them. So special thanks to everyone at my site, including my boss, 
Mike Besich, and then everyone who gave lectures and gave talks, all of the mentors, like we've, I've already said a thousand times. So Cosby students, please come down. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let me stop sharing because there are some online students. So Rachel Saka, if she's still on, not sure. Uh, Jonathan Shereel. Oh, there's some popping up. Olatoba Ojo. And then we have some people in person. Anissa Odin. <laughs> Tejas Mitra. Uh, Tadris, it didn't capitalize your last name. We'll get you a new one. Arya. Kevin. There you are. You can applaud. Ryan, who's online in the upper corner there. Freedom. Catherine. Oh, there you are. Divya, who we have on screen in the middle. Samantha, also on screen. Sean, also on screen. As you see, we had a lot of online people. Aiden, there you are. Valerie, who had to leave. And Elizabeth. Congratulations. Oh, Pablo, I'm going to get you too. All right, congratulations. And we already started to recognize our Doris Duke students in those last two groups. So Michelle and Pablo, we have two online as well. Yash and Ivy, who I think is, who both might also be gone by now, but that's okay. They had to leave early. And so that is all of the students. So congratulations one more time. And we're not quite done, so we have one more thing. So for the students, the YES students, who have completed two summers with us and one full school year, we have an extra special surprise for you. You all are, again, our colleagues now, and we have some white coats that we would love to get you. So please, all of, well, actually, let me just call you. You can come down as we recognize you. I will kind of move, but as you grab it, just keep, stay down here. Who do we have? Donovan Allen, come on down. Yeah, thank you. Hillary Boza. Who's this one? Jason Chen. That's Hillary. That's Hillary. Maria. Maria Ramos. Oh, she's online. But she still deserves a coat. <laughs> nice to see you, Maria. Marcus Waller. Come on down, Marcus. Jasmine Horton. Come on down, Jasmine. Skylar Spears. There she is. <laughs> right now. Oh, right now, I think I already had to leave, didn't she? I think Raynell had to leave. Ryan Krishna online. Another shout out. Who's next? I can't hear you. Anissa Odin. Come on down. That's Skylar. Oh, yeah, you can switch with Sky <laughs> with Jasmine. Here's Anissa's. Zivia, who's online. Mr. Russell. Uh, 
Sofia Alvarez. I'll give you Sofia's too. Tommy, is Tommy still here? There she is. Here, Tommy. Olatoba, who's online. I saw him pop up there a second ago. Rachel, who's online as well. And is that Julian? And Julian Westray already left, I think. All right, congratulations. Let's get a picture of you in your white coats. Oh, one more, sorry. Donice. Oh, man. Can't believe I almost forgot you, Donice. Isaiah Hooks. I saw him here. Did he have to leave too? I don't see him. And then Anissa Roberts. <laughs> Again, a reminder, these are all students who participate in at least two summers and one school year with us. So we will definitely have more next year, but can special congratulations. Thanks for putting up with me for such a long time. And for some of you, for at least Marcus and Anissa Odin, this is their third summer. So they've been here for a very long time. All right, congratulations. Okay, two more logistic things. So no one leave yet. As soon as I'm done talking, I'd like for everyone to come down. Where should we do photos? In here, out there? What do you think? So we're gonna do a group photo of all the students out by all of the beautiful windows, okay? As soon as we're done. The other thing that we need, we didn't collect all the laptops and badges from you. So Stephen and Solomon will be sitting over there Please give them to us before you leave so you don't have to mail them. Please, please, please. But that's the end. Thank you so much. It's been an amazing summer. Thanks, families, for coming. Thank you, students. Great job. I'll make an announcement. If anyone happened to find a set of keys, please let us know. A little black pouch on them. If you haven't gotten your abstract books, also grab those. They, Stephen has those too. So we will get your computers. We will take your badges. We will give you an abstract book and please take one more picture. And thank you everyone online. We are finished. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Marcus. You guys were awesome.